Hey, what's up guys? This is Seth, can you keep it real? We are on Just One Dime YouTube and I have three very special guests. Brett, Patrick, and Danilo are called brand builders. Each of them has a team underneath them and they build Amazon stores for investors. Today we are talking about something incredibly important for Amazon sellers and that is expectations. Really quick, what did you guys drink in the last two minutes? I just want to know. Uh, coffee for me. Okay. Starbucks. And coffee. you asked for what when you got here? Rum. <laughs> you asked for water. <laughs> what about you? Rum. You had coffee. Coffee. So truthfully, yeah. I asked for rum and coffee. Hey, you got it. Hey, you got it. <laughs> <laughs> drinking problem, man. So Come on. If Brett falls over in the middle of this episode. I you know why? You to know. Patrick will catch him. I'll take care of him. Well, first. honestly, there's four of us, so it's social, so it's okay. If you make it through tonight, you're welcome back. This is true. <laughs> yep. And I want to share a really quick story with you guys before we jump in. When I was a kid, I loved going out with my dad hunting, trapping, things like that. And one evening, my dad said, you're gonna go hunting with me tomorrow. The next morning I woke up, I was ready to go. We were gonna go out and you know hunt some coyotes and do some trapping. And my mom had persuaded my dad to that I needed to stay home and work on other stuff and do some chores. And I was absolutely devastated. Like I was crushed. Like I still feel the emotional discouragement from that moment. And I think this happens with a lot of Amazon sellers is they have these expectations. They heard something from some person who recycled some course from 2014, it's complete garbage, and they made their expectations incredibly high. And then they get into it and they're incredibly disappointed. You know, if, if no one had told me, hey, you get to go hunting with dad tomorrow, I wouldn't have cared. I wouldn't have been disappointed the next morning, but it's because my expectations were here and this is what Amazon reality is now, this crushes people. And so today I want to talk about some of those expectations and have some fun doing it. Let's do it. Let's... I'm going to have you guys just go through. Brett, why don't you introduce yourself? Give us your claim to fame. You know, brag about yourself for a moment. These guys are very humble, so I, have to, I had to ask them, please brag about yourself before this episode and tell us about your relationship with Just One Dime. And then Patrick and then Danilo. Yeah, I appreciate it. Thanks, Seth. Uh, my name is Brett George. You know, I started with Just One Dime in 2017 as a student. I was selling online and had been for a while um, off Amazon, but had no clear direction on what I was doing wrong with Amazon and why it wasn't working for me. Uh, just because that traditional search and optimization is just different. Their algorithms are different. Yeah. So I um, came to Just One Dime as a student and fortunate enough to have mentors that are in this room here um, that have helped me grow, um, helped me, my Amazon store grow, my brands grow. And so from- Danilo mentored you for a while. Correct, correct. Um, that's where I met Danilo um, and, and well, you too for that matter. But I think you said it best and I'll, I'll be quick on this is there's so many self-proclaimed gurus out there that promise the world and flash fancy cars and jets and all the the, the jazz yeah but they're not authentic yep um, they're making their money and their fame off of the message yep. not the actual opportunity yep um, and that that's what I like so so much about just one dime and just coming up you know I've got an 18 claim utility patent um, that is phenomenal and that you you got this patent? Yes, uh, yeah. my, a friend of mine and I um, have this patent and it is absolutely life-changing <laughs> what I, th I think the future holds for this. Um, we already turned down a multi-million dollar, 16 plus million dollar offer just for the patent alone. And, and you're, so, not gonna tell, you're not gonna tell the world what it is, right? We won't tell the world yet. <laughs> <laughs> not yet. Right. So we turned down 16 and a half million dollars. Why did you turn that down? I get that question a lot. And, and I think most importantly, it's, it's what it can be. Yeah. Right. Don't live for the now. Uh, I, I do like to live for the now for sure. Right. Because you never know. You're not never promised tomorrow. But it's the opportunity. This is a, a multi-billion dollar industry a year. Yeah. Right. So 16 million is pennies in comparison to what it could be. And right. we have a utility patent that even the largest guys in the game can't touch. Yeah. And so we'll we'll see what fruits uh, of, of the labor are to come. But uh, I'm very excited for that future. So, awesome. Thank Thanks you. so much for being here, Brett. Sure. Patrick Cupolari. How's it going? Patrick Cupolari. Um, let's see here. Multi-million dollar Amazon seller, eight figure uh, Amazon seller was not always an eight-figure seller. When I met Just One Dime, uh, the year before, I did almost a million dollars, and I watched that go to almost nothing because I did all the wrong things. And then uh, based on the Just One Dime course, I started get going in the right direction. 
And honestly, that's what caused me to build up what I have now. So just honestly, the best practices. So that course is so, so valuable um, if you know what to do with it, right? If you take action. Right. Um, so that's You that. can't just binge watch. You need to move to action it's, and apply it, it as you go. And that's with anything in life, yeah. right? So a lot of people do something and say, oh, well, it doesn't work for me. Well, maybe because you didn't try hard enough, maybe because you're lazy, right? You get a lot of those <laughs> different things. Like it's not success for everybody. Nothing, nothing's guaranteed in this life, right? Yep. Uh, but if you put the hard work in, you're guaranteed to get something. That's yep. the kind of the way I've always looked at it. Um, that, and I also have the slowest growing YouTube channel in the history, YouTube Profits <laughs> Business Gurus. It is an awesome channel. Am I allowed Profit to tag that? business. I like how he put that in. It's slow growing, but you need to there. know about it. You need to know about it. <laughs> no, seriously. So that's my claim below. of fame, how slow Profit that's Business Guru. Yeah, absolutely. It's an awesome channel. I mean, because you just deliver straight up content. Yeah. You're on Amazon, you deliver content. You're on Amazon, you serve it up. Like, that's the best way to do it. You know what's funny? Somebody was like, you, you guys aren't that consistent. And we actually slowed it down recently. Oh, wait, because we, we I'm busy with my Amazon stores. Yeah. <laughs> so we made a decision. We're like, we're going to bump the quality. And it right. has been like the last, like probably two months, like a lot higher, like just production quality in general. Yeah. And we actually do stuff. Like right. We actually are building life. Amazon stores, right? We're doing our own right. stuff. We, we don't have time for it. Yeah, that picture so, you sent of all the boxes in the truck was insane. All these products being shipped. Yeah, we're uh, Oh my word, like. We're uh, yeah. super, that's that's like my biggest thing. Like I wanna make sure stuff gets shipped a certain way. So the factories hate me for that, but I don't care. And I yep. wanna see nice, neat, nice, neat stuff. And then obviously I put it on, on Instagram too. So that's kind of nice to have. And I can't wait to talk about factories and some of the problems you're going to encounter as an Amazon seller. And we're gonna be very real about that in a moment. Danilo Variale. Yeah, first of all, thank you for inviting me here. Yeah, brother. It's an honor. Uh, my name is Danilo Variale. I'm from Italy. And I've been in the US for the past seven years, and six of which I've been in an Amazon seller. Uh, the reason why I started is because um, family. I want to spend more time seeing my wife and my, and my kids. And so, uh, you know, one night I searched on YouTube how to make money online. I found this guy here next to me, and I never stopped learning since that day. And it's been a wonderful journey for me for the past six years, build uh, two Amazon brands, two stores. And it's been, uh, it's been a beautiful journey for me. So super excited to be here. Yeah, happy to have you here, man. Um, I love what you said yesterday about how you were at the pizza, working for the pizza company we were first here, and then you, in the morning, you were watching this crazy redheaded while guy. Working. And then you're, oh yeah, while you're working, making pizza. And I then in the evening, you work at your Amazon yeah. store. And that's yeah. how it is for a lot of people, is you're, you have a full-time job, and you're doing Amazon on the side, and it's hard. And there's some seasons where you're waiting, and there's some seasons where it's taking up a ton of time deep into the night, we chatting with a supplier, and that's normal. Yep. Selling at Amazon's easy, right? Super easy. You just do one, two, three, become a millionaire, a couple months, take a course, <laughs> that's boom. It. That's it. That's exactly so what it is. So we should all go home. And you get a free Lambo just because. Exactly. Uh, Amazon show, it'll show up in your backyard. Guaranteed you can take a picture. Yep. That, that first order is going to make you millions. I, I can assure first you. First order? Yeah. That's oh, yeah. certainly not the case. Guaranteed 300% <laughs> profit. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, it, it's definitely interesting. I think some of the personas that people get and start to interpret from the things they see online. Yeah. You know, I... I Speaking of online, that, that's one of the worst possible ways to get, I mean, it's the best possible way to get information from everywhere, yeah. but how do you know what is true information? And when you come to Amazon or come to try to do an entrepreneurial journey, I think a lot of people think, hey, I'm going to have instant success. I'm going to be that guy. Yeah. Right. And I think, I think you should strive to but have. Where do they get that idea from? Where do they, who is that guy? You know, I, I think it's, it's different for everybody, whatever their vision of success is, yeah. right? Whatever they've been taught to be successful. Maybe if they come from humble beginnings, they don't have anything. Um, they see somebody that has that fancy car, nice clothes <laughs> or something. But a lot of times those guys, not always, but a lot of times those guys don't really have a lot of it, their, their show. They're not, they're not right. truth. That's what I love so much about just one dime. Um, we don't flesh no Lambo. <laughs> right, right. I mean, I, I assure you, everyone in this room could buy Lambos multiple times over. <laughs> the dumbest um, financial decision Yes, that's ever. usually That's usually a, a sign of a wealthy person, not always, but a sign, is they yeah. don't show it off. Yeah. They don't want to. Some of our most successful students who are multimillionaires, they don't like to share their sales numbers because they don't want the world to, oh, teach me, teach me, teach sure. me. And you said it yesterday so well. You said a lot of Amazon sellers are introverts. Yeah, that's naturally. Why? That's why you do it. That's why you do it. You're because yeah. it, it, it builds up to that. You want to get out of the, the corporate hustle You're or whatever it is. You're sick of all that crap. You're sick of it. You don't want to deal with the daily, daily, the day to day crap. So you end up doing your thing, and you you're like a, a creature habit because being that introvert is actually what built it up. So don't let people BS you. It's not out there and doing all the showy stuff because right. that's not what it is. It's hardcore hustle. It's hard work. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's in, it's product development to like the most extreme level. Yeah. because you don't have some big team to do product development. So you have to do everything. So naturally you become an introvert if you're successful. 
And someone told me once, and I always, I'll take this to my grave. He told me that real money is silent. And mm. that's the truth. Mm. That's the truth. You know, I mean, look, that's look, look at us. You know, well, I mean, there's a lot of money said. in this room. And right. if and you, you saw you me on the street, you wouldn't know. This, you know, t-shirt. Yeah. David, yesterday, he's here. No offense to your t-shirt. But he told David, me story. It's, it's, it's Supreme, though. That's a great story. Yeah. Yeah. Supreme. Can you tell that? Can you it's tell fake that? Supreme, though. Fake Sorry. Supreme. Okay, tell us <laughs> yeah. the story about David Lopez. <laughs> so, he walks in with this super messed up, not messed up, but like if you look at it closely, it is really, David yeah. Lopez, just went MS Espanol, multi-million dollar seller. Take yeah, so basically that the, the shirt that he was wearing yesterday is the same shirt that he was wearing. The day that he crossed the border from uh, uh, Cuba, uh, I think from Mexico actually, yeah. got into the, U, uh, into the U.S. And for him, that shirt means so much. Yeah. And that's why he wore that shirt yesterday here because it's a... Uh, it's reminding him that you know that's actually a victory for him to be here today and be able to you know uh, build stores, Amazon yeah. store for investors, have his own stores, and so I think it's a it was such a beautiful story. It's the same reason he keeps his old car, the car yeah. he used to yeah. sleep in. That's yeah. awesome. It's super yeah. old and beat up, but he keeps it. And the other As day, like a few weeks ago, he bumped into one of his students by accident in just randomly in town. And he felt self-conscious, like, oh shoot, if she sees my car, she's gonna think I'm a fake because I'm not driving a Lamborghini. Like, that's sad. Sure. That's messed up. Yeah. We live in a world where if you don't drive a fancy car or you know have a really nice, I mean, the, you know how cheap these cuffs are? It's not even funny. They're like under a dollar, they're super cheap. Mm -hmm. If we live in a world where unless you have like a beautiful girlfriend, a perfect house, an amazing car, you must not be successful. That's really screwed up. That's society, yeah. yeah. It's, it's horrible and it creates this expectation that's devastating to people. To be honest, they'll regret it if they go take that. First of all, it's fake when you see all that crazy stuff, right? There are people out there that have the Lambos and have the money, right? Yeah, for real. Sure. But usually they're quiet about it. Yeah, but <laughs> exactly. It's not the people you expect sometimes. And then yeah. those ones, are just they're just, look, personally, I'm just smart with my money. Mm. So I'd rather put money in real estate. Uh, do I have nice cars? Yes. Can I have a lot nicer cars? Yes, but I won't. Like, mm. I still enjoy that to an extent, but you right. can't overdo. It's, it's it's like that with life with every any, anything, right? Yeah. Like, you can't overdo anything. Let me start with this. Shipping my products from China to the Amazon's Fulfillment Center, just a few hundred dollars. And yeah. prices will always be the same. <laughs> For your samples. Yeah. <laughs> For the samples, right? Is it across so the street? Help, help me unwrap this, guys. I want you guys watching to walk away with so much at the beginning, discouraging news that when you build a store, you actually succeed because you're ready. And if this scares you and you say this isn't for me, there's no shame in that. That means you're probably not meant to be an entrepreneur anyways. So containers, 40 foot containers, for example. Yeah. So, I mean, you guys, it, tell yeah. me if I'm wrong. Before this year, uh, you can get a 40 foot as cheap as $6,000, up yeah. to about eleven to $12,000. We were was, complaining at the time. Yeah, we were that complaining. Was, people were complaining. Went up to 12, just explain we were, for people who don't know what is a container. Some people yeah. are like, what are you talking about, so a box? It's like, yeah, those big shipping containers mm -hmm. where you put your products. So you put them in there in China, they go mm -hmm. on a boat, These a mega big, ship. These big ones, big but they got ribs on the yeah, side. You see yeah. them in movies a lot. Yeah, you can walk into it. Yeah. yeah, okay. So, and, and these ships carry like, these mega ships carry like 18,000 containers, right? Yeah. And we'll get to that later, why shipping takes how long it does sometimes. They're loading up these big ships. Yes, so it was anywhere from 6,000 to 12,000. And when it, this happened in the beginning of the year this year, uh, or last year, it's, it started going up to 12,000. I remember we were all complaining, like, what is this? I just did one, it was like $23,000. My last one was $27,800. Okay, so what happened? A year ago it was six, eight, ten thousand. 10,000, so it's more than doubled. Yeah. Why? You know, I, I think there's a lot of debate around the rhyme or reason why things are. You could blame it on you could blame it on supply versus demand. Really, I don't, I don't know the um, solid truth to it, but regardless, that's what the container costs are right now, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, I'm easily getting quoted 18, to, to the highest I got, which was crazy because we really needed a container was 60,000. We didn't do it, yeah. of course, but I mean, it's just insane, the inflation and, it almost seems like some of the transport companies are even taking advantage of the situation yeah. because there's it's yeah. it's just the wild west right now. So yeah. one thing I do know is when California shut down because of c unlike some other states, they shut down the ports. Yeah. As a result, ships couldn't get in. Huge Therefore, delays. Freight Forward started jacking the prices because they couldn't yeah. move. But like, if we're going to do this, we're going right. to make it worth it. And that really impacted the economy. Yeah, and I'm, I'm glad you Plus mentioned that. inflation. Because I, I know the Port of Houston has shut down multiple times from technological errors, different things that have happened here recently, just in the last couple of weeks, as well as- Not related to uh, not related to just Interesting. technology errors, uh, you know, where electronics and stuff go down. Then also across China, right? Uh, Shenzhen, Guangdong, um, a lot of these ports have shut down because of outbreaks, outbreaks. Yeah. right? Yeah. So they had a huge outbreak within the port itself and shut down. So then we're having to reroute containers and shipments from, let's say, Guangdong to Hong Kong. Yeah. And there's additional fees there yeah. to truck it from one to the other. Yeah, Unless there's this domino effect. On the ship. One thing affects something else, right. affects something else, yeah. and eventually it catches up. Yeah. So here's my next question. So. I shouldn't sell on Amazon. 
because I'm not going to make money. Right? Is that a fair conclusion? It's definitely not true because the market is there. And so uh, there's a- Amazon, it's, it's the biggest platform today um, for online sales. And the amount of demand on Amazon, it's, it's, it's incredible. You, you cannot miss out on that. You want to be part of that. And so uh, the most important thing, as Patrick was mentioning before, it's actually focusing on yourself, on developing products, adding value, and bringing more value to your customers. That should always be the most important thing. Mm-hmm. Then you can always find, way, find ways around different strategies to lower shipping costs, for example. We're doing that. You know, mm-hmm. We work with Amazon AGL, Amazon Global Logistics Services. They give us much better, you know, much lower rates compared to the regular uh, freight forwarding rates. So we find the ways to uh, save money in shipping, uh, even though those issues are out there, right? And spend time on developing those products. We cannot stress this enough. That's exactly what we do here at Just One Dime Down For You. We develop products, guys. In the real sense of the word, we redesign products, we add value, we make them better. Always gotta ask yourself, why would a customer even consider clicking on my listing if uh, if I'm a new seller, if I get zero reviews, right? So they are willing to part from their money to receive the value you Correct. offer them. Even though you got zero reviews. Yeah, and I'm glad yeah. you, real quick, I'm glad yeah. you mentioned done for you. So for those of you guys wondering, well, what is that? So Brett, Patrick, and Danilo are called brand builders. Each of them has a team underneath them and they build Amazon stores for investors. By investor, I don't mean you saved up money over the last three years and your life or marriage or health depend on this money. If that's you, do not do this, okay? That's a responsibility it's not none of us want. True. And that is it's not, not healthy wise. for anybody. It's we not have one person who applied and like, I got $60,000, but I have no job. And David's like, well, you, you don't get accepted. And I'm like, why? It's like, because that's crazy. You need a job. You're, you're literally telling me if, if this doesn't work, because you could lose every single dime. This is an investment. You could lose every single dime. Therefore, you're going to be out living on the street if I don't make sure your product sells. And that's a responsibility no one should have to but carry. It applies to anything, bro. I mean, even if, even if you do stocks, if you do uh, a, a bitcoins, if you do any type of investment. So if you're yeah. investing in real estate, stocks, uh, a Bitcoin, right? You can't. You don't want to invest your last savings into that specific journey, into that specific, you know, investment or whatever the situation is. And so this also applies to the FOIs. They right? need to be willing to yeah. part with that money because yeah. it's an investment. Yeah. It breaks my heart to see the educational system, and I'm going to try to stay away from political to- topics today because this is just one dime's channel, and I get that. But if how many people actually knew? Did any of you? Were any of you guys taught how to do a budget in school? Absolutely no, not. not at all. I wasn't. It's never mentioned. That is like not one of the most basic things someone should be taught. If you understand how to do a budget, you understand money, you understand I take this money, I put it here so it grows, this money pays for my rent, this money pays for my food, and you should be smart about it. Like you make it work for you. You know, I think you hit on a solid point, not to go deep into political systems and education because teachers are fantastic. We but can't help ourselves. It, it is. <laughs> it, honestly, I think systematically we're programmed from from – an early age that the only way to be successful is to go to school, go to right, college, right. get a job, work nine to five, do this, do that, right? Be someone like else's robot, labor, like right? a freaking robot, right? Don't think outside the box. And I think that's why, you know, a lot of entrepreneurs, you go against the rain. It's about taking calculated risk that you can recover from. Yeah. Right. So, and if you follow that path and keep pressing forward, there's no shortcut to success. I nope, mean, nope. I assure you, I've, I've probably, I don't know about everyone. You've I'm investigated like, every possible I've shortcut. I've investigated every, <laughs> every, 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 <laughs> there, every book guru <laughs> and, and you name it out there. And there is no shortcut to success. Success is hard. It's just constant perseverance and grind. It'll break you. It'll break you a hundred times. But getting back up is the best part because you're stronger it. every time. So That's back it. to you guys really quick. So if you're wondering what we're talking about, this is where investors pay a chunk of money for just one dime to build an Amazon store for them. This is not a quick, rich get, oh, in three months you're gonna, no way. Like expect nine to 12 months easy to launch those products, to start seeing those profits the next year is gonna take time. But going back to those of you guys who are building your own store, I wanna bring up another question. Mm-hmm. Sure. What is the most unrealistic expectation when it comes to selling an Amazon? Timing. Okay, explain that. Like um, people expect to be in the market like two months, three yeah. months, four months, and it's just not the case. It's not just the, the way the business works. Why? Because you have to uh, do your research first of all. So make sure that you find those products, you vet those products, you track those products for 
for weeks, months maybe, before you even select a product. And then you gotta do your differentiation study. So you gotta go ahead and look at how we're gonna add value back to- Beyond maybe, my competitors. Giving reasons, why, giving reasons to the, the uh, customers to buy from you, right? So yeah. what are those reasons gonna be? So then, then, you know, there's back and forth communication with suppliers, right? That takes time, they don't speak How long language. could that take? Oh my God, that's- <laughs> From the first time you contact a supplier, guys, we're gonna keep it really real. Yeah. How long does it take, realist can it take? Right, listen, in my- okay, Until like, okay, well, I'm ready to pay the first 30%. Some, some products, we got four sample runs, yeah. It took almost four months. Just okay, for the so that's account. four months just for just samples, for sample. and they haven't started building the product yet. Yeah. <laughs> now no. let me just. But why to... are we doing that for go the ahead. end yeah. purpose, which is go to the mar- go to the market in a much more differentiated way, right. so the customers could actually buy from us. That's yeah. the foundation of the business, right there. And I'm going to jump to Brett. What happens then? Let's say you get the samples, you pay your first thirty percent, they go into production, and the month goes by, and it's troop, troop, troop. Ever run into this before? Oh Brent? my goodness. <laughs> we have been into this <laughs> more times than I care to talk about. You know, these suppliers want your business. Yeah. yeah. Right. And so it's the old saying, you know, I, I think in corporate America, it's always uh, under promise, over deliver. Yeah. It's the absolute reverse Opposite. of that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it is. We're going to over promise. And this is not anti Chinese. No, absolutely. But Chinese business people, we have staff in China, they've no. told us this. The One of the most important words they learn in English is the word. Yes. Yes. Can you do this? Yes. Can you do this? Yes. Can you do this? Yes. Because they yeah. don't want to disappoint you yeah. up front. But man, being disappointed later on sucks. Even when they say it's it's not true, they say yes, not true. Recent examples where we, we placed an order with a, a solid factory. Yeah. Uh, big business, big brands that they, they represent. Yep. Uh, two months go by. Hey, where's the update? What's going on? Oh, we're in production. It's good. Okay, great. Show me those pictures. Let's see it. Uh, let's see mid production. Yeah, I'll get those to you. Now the money. Hey, where are those pictures? Yeah. I'll get those to you. And, you know, to the point where you got to send in your audit team. That doesn't happen all the time. But send it in your what? Say that again. Explain because people. So, don't know yeah, this. A- absolutely. So when I say audit team, I'm referring to their audit, are t- like audit. Yeah, yeah. So so auditing just to check checks and balances, right? Due diligence, right. trying to make sure we always do pre factory uh, pre pre order audits, right? Check the factory out, make sure the licensing, the certifications, all the stuff are good. They're legitimate. They who they say they are. They're owned by who they say they are, etc. But there are times that you should do mid production audits. You know, yeah. everyone does a little bit different, but especially when you start getting hesitation or resistance of providing the things that you're asking for. Right. Right. Those times I either want video calls or I'm sending in somebody because I want to find out what's going on. Where's our money? What's mm-hmm. happening? And that's what I'm referring to. And you should do those things. Again, it's due diligence, just like you would do it uh, with anything. Yep. Right. You should definitely do it in your business. Yeah, absolutely. So from the point of finding a product, none of, I don't even find a product yet. I just <laughs> want to find a product all the way to the point of it is live on Amazon. Realistic. You can take how long for my own businesses, and I have yeah. two Amazon stores, two brands. Yeah. Um, on average, it takes anywhere between six to twelve months for okay. my own products, and I've been okay. doing this for almost seven years now. Okay, yeah. so for those of you guys watching videos online, if someone says, "Yeah, you can do this in thirty days," you can do this in two months. Has it happened? Yes, it can. You can do it. Is that realistic? Is that right. common? Is that going to help you stand out from the competition? Heck, exactly. No. Yeah. So you have to realize this is a long-term plan. So but I don't want to go back to the shipping though. If the shipping is so high because it's gone up, yeah. then I mean, Amazon's going to shut down, right? People are going to stop selling because we can't afford it anymore. Amazon's going to literally close down. FBA is over. I can't order anymore. Prices right? just go up. Yeah, that's a beautiful thing about inflation. As prices go that's up. Right. Exactly. Like, and, and it's it's we're so seeing it, goes it up right for now. Me, you're saying it goes up for my competitors yeah, too. Yeah, for everybody. Right. So it's an even playing field. Now that's a calculated risk, right? At the same time. Of course. So and that's yeah. what makes it so difficult sometimes. You see what the shipping is today. Yeah. We're like, all right, well, in two months, everybody else is going to have the same thing happen too. They're going to raise the shipping. Where the risk there is, and the calculated risk we need to take is. What happens if the competitor happens to have a lot of stock? Right. Maybe they have U.S. Right. stock that we don't know about, and then you miss it. Yeah. Right. So now you have a higher price than, than they do, but in most cases that's not the case. But we put the work in to figure that out who the competitors are and what the likelihood of that is. But we're seeing it now in all different kinds of markets. On, I mean, I'll even say what it is. Like if you look at like standing desks right now, yeah. they're all up like thirty percent. Yeah. That's the true. reason was they took the biggest. Right. You yeah. probably saw the same yeah. thing. Yeah. So that's great. Right? So the market the markets. pays for it. Yeah. Everything. I mean, Walmart will have it too because Walmart's dealing yeah. with the same stuff we are. I mean, yeah. they're not they're not immune from it. Yeah. So you're saying we should sell on Amazon? Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. But I think it's important to point out too, when you go to market, especially with these increased prices, there are going to be sellers that are still lower, right? They still have inventory and stock. So don't let that misguide you, but you've got to do the appropriate due diligence there because 
you have to have a higher sell price, right? You yeah. got to have that margin because your cost was greater. Right. They could still be in stock with the inventory, as Patrick mentioned a minute ago. Right. And so eventually they're going to deplete and have to reorder and face those same uh, adversities that you did. Or so we're so ahead of the game. That's where the, exactly. Yeah. We're so ahead we're of the game. Position better, actually. But that's where differentiation becomes fundamental that's because right. you can now ask for a higher price. But why? Because you spend time on building those freaking products. Yeah, man. Right. And yep. now you can actually ask for more. And so, you so can you're make telling money. me I can launch a product with no reviews, Danilo, and I can expect to get purchases, even though my competitor from may have 200. One. Yep. Because, say it again, because what? Because you differentiated your product and Which you spent time. You added value. You made it like a different shape, like add features, functionalities, right? right. You add uh, accessories that can actually complete the experience of using the product. You give more value to your customers. Yeah. Okay? So you just mentioned an awesome thing yeah. because differentiation is, yes, one form of the utilitarian piece of this, right? How can I change it? How can I bundle it? How can I create more value? But there's also something that so many people forget that is a huge, huge factor when it comes to selling. It's the personalization. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you focus on selling the product, yeah. you're gonna make less sales than if I sell you the experience, right? Yeah. Right. If I sell you the experience, that perceived value, you can capitalize and trump a lot of utilitarian values that are there just because I sold you how you're gonna fill and how right. it's gonna solve the can problem. Can you give you me a practical that. example of selling the experience versus selling a product like what does that look like great that's that's a fantastic so have you ever been around a salesman who's real pushy and you're like man just this just guy would leave me alone <laughs> amazon you don't have the salesman in your ear per se true you've got the visualization right so it's all about for this particular product hypothetical let's use this fancy <laughs> ship in a bottle ship, rum rum, rum baby. <laughs> whiskey set think about the conversations we've had about this since we've been here the last couple days yeah, yeah. we've talked about this whiskey set multiple mm. times mm. how you that's got so it true the first time you used it, yeah. you know, offered us, obviously we're all of age, so yep. uh, <laughs> uh, offered it to us. And it's, that's it. The experience you created, why it was important to you, how it kind of uh, exemplifies the room. So with the product particularly, uh, that we did horse here is make that product, put it in the setting in which the person is going to use it and mm -hmm. highlight every feature and benefit of that product, yeah. of how it's going to benefit the uh, utility yeah. of how I'm going to use it. And While they're using the product, exactly. before, during, and after yeah. they use the product. How can I hmm. complete that experience? So you're customers? saying a great way to advertise this thing would be to take a picture of us doing a podcast together with that right there and Brett taking the, his The sits. seller would be extremely happy. Make it happy. feel natural. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. 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 yeah, absolutely. That's a really, really good example. In other words, you need to understand your customer. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not just selling this because other people your are selling it. Yep. I'm selling it because I understand what they want. You got to talk that about experience. the solution. There's the kind solution. of a, would you guys agree? There's sort of a masculine shipish yes. type ship feel, sure. almost like a cabin. We're in a ship pirate cabin ship right now. Room, but you said a key thing there. That's the difference yeah. between selling true, products actually. and yeah. building a brand. Yeah, yeah. that yeah. that statement you just made is the which is why that. we call you brand builders because right. we don't want people thinking, oh, well, if just when I build a store for me, you're just build, selling me products. And nothing against arbitrage. This is not arbitrage. We're talking about a brand, which means it's going to take a lot longer to be profitable, but the long-term value is so much greater. Going back to how long it takes to launch an Amazon product, I could actually launch an Amazon product maybe in three months sure. if I wanted to. Just Absolutely. buy stuff from China, slap a label on it, yep. and you know, the call it private label. My very first quick and dirty. was within 30 days. Right. But I didn't differentiate right. it. But it so happened. No one else was selling it, so yeah. it sold well. And you probably air freighted it, too. Oh, yeah. It wasn't too Absolutely. Yeah, it was up DHK. It was small. Yep. Yeah, it was small. I didn't even yeah. know how to do shipping freight back then. That yeah. was in 2014. Yeah. Wow just not the case because again as we said before we don't do that right. with the value of products in the real sense of the word because you want to position yourself in a way that you can actually make sales on Amazon you don't want price to be your differentiator because that's the end of your Amazon journey right there yeah. you want your product your value to be your differentiator that's how you make sales with zero reviews because yeah. Yeah. people are scared about okay I don't have reviews how, how am I going to make sales right. did you do your due diligence did you develop yeah. Did you add value? If, if so, then you're good. Don't worry about it. The yeah, there are a lot of people do that. They would know, oh, no reviews, no sales. That's my damn strategy. Like the first whatever amount of units go out, lower price. Yeah. That's how I build up my reviews. Yeah. So how are you selling to build up your reviews if you're yeah. no review? So it's like, it feels like a catch 22 for yeah. them. But here's the thing. Your business ultimately needs reviews if you want a lot of sales. But to get reviews, you need sales first. So you need reviews for sales, but sales for reviews, so you're stuck. If reviews is what it takes to sell my product, I am forcing the shopper you, to decide based on reviews, I have failed to what? Yeah. You are possibly yeah. your failed your business. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well like, said. <laughs> like if you really expect that to be the differentiator, now I'm sorry, that's, but you're gonna fail. That's terrible, because yeah. you're so, at an yeah. incredible disadvantage, right? Right, And that's the one thing you can't control. Right now, that's miserable. an article just came out in the news, like a, a few days ago, about 
Amazon sellers getting critical reviews. And so what they would do is they would message the buyer and say, I'll refund you. And the buyer's like, no, I left a critical review because it's a bad product. They said, I will refund you and pay you double to remove that critical review. Now I get sometimes leave critical reviews that are unfair. I get that, but I think you nailed it. If my business's success depends on removing one or two critical reviews, then I already failed on my business yep. because I yep. did not give you, Bobby McGee, the customer, a reason to buy my product outside of reviews. Like I'm literally putting the health and future of my business into something I can't control. Yep. I will not sleep at night, but man, if we added value, oh my goodness. And if you You're don't add value, position. that's everybody's like, oh, I got hijacked. Right. Sometimes I just want to like not laugh, but it's like, no, no, you deserve it. And explain hijack. Cause some so, people are like, what does that actually so mean? Did I, someone steal your car? Uh, you know, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> you selling your car. <laughs> it's true, so, you sell cars on so, so basically, um, let's say you have a listing up and running, yeah. right? And you're like, yeah, I took my pictures. I did my copy. I put my stupid logo on it. That's yep. all I did to differentiate it. And now maybe even your factory or somebody from China, this happens a lot, they'll jump on your listing yep. and they'll try to sell it. Two sellers. On one listing. On one two listing. Offerings. Yeah. And yeah. then they lower your price. Even right. though it's your listing, you built it. You got Their the price is lower than yours. You took the pictures. You're going to be responsible for those reviews on that listing too. So that's your baby. Right. So if right? they sell a crap product, all yeah. of a sudden you have a two one-star review. Yeah. And so they get on there. But here's the thing. If you sell plain Jane crap and it took you 30 days because you just put your stupid label on it and somebody hijacks you. No, 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 I private labeled it. Yeah. I put my They're label. like, it's Look my product. <laughs> no, it's not. You would love it. No, Why, because it's, it's my private. You have no idea who I yeah. am, but right. you know. <laughs> so you do that and it's like, well, somebody hijacked me. It's not your listing anyway, man. Technically, yeah. they're right. Yeah. Like if you ask Amazon, it is the same product. Right. Yeah, it's right. like arbitrage. Yeah. I just yeah. bought a generic product and that's we sold exactly it. it this will give me yeah. hate what I just said because people will be like, no, that's not right. You need to be with us like the other Amazon sellers. That's the truth of it though. Yeah. If you don't differentiate it and truly make it different, they're technically selling the same thing. It is yeah. your own fault. That's what gets people hijacked. Yeah. yeah. And you just said it. You said it's your own fault. Yeah. I'm going to talk about society just for a moment and then we'll get super practical. Mm -hmm. We live in a world today where people don't want to take ownership. So true. And, and, and I'm not attacking anyone in particular. I'm just saying I, I run into this all the time on YouTube. I run into this on Instagram. People like they get angry. They call Amazon's a scam. Why? Because they suspended my account. Why they suspend your account? Why put in documents? Did you put in the documents they said? No, I did not. Well, then what do you expect? They no. think you are a scammer. Now I get it. It's frustrating. But if people aren't willing to say mm -hmm. my fault, like it, 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 I was taught as a child, thank God for my parents to say this. If I wronged you, Brett, hey, Brett, I was wrong. Will you please forgive me? Yeah, absolutely. Not, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm time. sorry you felt that way. Like, it's almost condescending. Like, I'm sure. sorry. It's your issue, but I'm sorry. No, I was wrong. Will you forgive me, Brett? Like that kind of thinking. It is so powerful. It's so powerful because yeah. it frees you yeah. to yeah. understand you're going to mess up. Yeah. Your business's failure is your fault. And it doesn't even mean you did something wrong morally. You just, you're learning as you go. Yeah. And if people 100%. can't admit that, they'll never make the change. And that's why they're never successful. Right. They and they need people. someone to blame because they can't handle the burden of saying, I screwed this up. I didn't differentiate. I moved too quickly. Yep. I had this idea. I believed one YouTuber who made it look easy. I faced reality and instead of learning from it, I had to shift my blame. Yep. I did a video for like one of the other, sorry, but it was like one of the other research tools out there, right? Yeah. We did like a little partnership for a little I can't while. I believe you did it for I'm the sorry. research tool. I thought we were <laughs> friends. I'm sorry. I just, I, <laughs> can you guys just cancel his mic, please? They, they were just, just so let him good keep to talking, me. They were but completely so good to muted. Me. Should I just act like. <laughs> <laughs> I keep going. So I did, and the amount of hate, because it was like live, the yeah. amount of, there was two guys that they were, and you could tell, they were just complaining. Right. And the one guy was like, oh, you guys are a scam. I used your research software. I launched my product and I failed. Come on. Wow. Wow. <laughs> like that? So I ignored him. I ignored him. Right? It's like buying a shovel. Yeah. And because I couldn't dig a three foot hole, even though the shovel was fine, yeah. I ran into rocks. Oh, it's the shovel's wrong. Yeah. He so didn't cut through a rock. I was, <laughs> I, I saw his comment. I was like, I'm going to leave it alone because there was other people asking questions. I was right. like, let me get to right. the real questions. Right? And then he comments on top. You didn't answer my question. Right. So he like, the It's because Stand most by. people want to be a part of the success, not the journey to get there. Yeah, right. they don't want to hear they, it. There, there is no, unless you're just, you hit the lottery or you, you come from, um, a, a really wealthy background and you're a trust fund baby. What are your superpowers again? I'm rich. Nothing against yeah. those guys. Congrats. Yeah. I wish I was that. But <laughs> unfortunately, um, I have to be the fruit of my own labor. So yeah. because of that, uh, people want that success. They want yeah. the success, but they a lot of people don't have the drive or the gumption to continue to push forward. To go yeah. through the journey. The it's like, uh, here, great example here. Going to the gym. Not that I, I'm a huge fitness buff, as you can tell, but, you know, you see someone fit, right? Seth's fit, he works out a lot, right? He eats right. On the other hand, don't do that as much. Uh, 
but I can't go into the gym. Although mentally, if I go into the gym and I eat an apple and do some push ups, expect baby. to look like Seth, <laughs> right? But you you think you should. I've been working out a week. I can't believe I don't look like that. It's that same mentality yeah. when it comes to, to Amazon. Uh, you know, launching products is is a series of steps. It, it's a process and. Just because you launch a product and it isn't selling as fast doesn't mean this doesn't work. Yep. It means you need to figure out what you can do better. Yep. Uh, maybe you misjudged the market. Maybe you didn't differentiate enough. Maybe the market shifted. Right. There's a lot of things, but don't stop. Keep going. And yep. then look back a year from now, you're going to be so much further ahead. And using the muscle analogy, how does a muscle grow? By breaking it down. Oh my God. Oh my God. It gets easier. Huh? Every day it gets a little easier. Yeah? But you gotta do it every day. That's the hard part. You actually literally have to hurt the muscle which, which stretches it and that's how it actually gets stronger. Mm -hmm. yeah. This is a concept of life that is so important. I, let me, you guys tell me if you think this is accurate or not, okay? One of the struggles I think a lot of Amazon sellers have is they approach selling an Amazon like buying on Amazon. You know, if I buy a product on Amazon, I can get a refund. I can, for whatever reason under the sun, it could be because I think the temperature is one degree too hot today and I don't feel like using this product, return. I can get a refund, return, yeah. serve me Amazon. And even though that is awesome for a capitalistic society because it's driven by incentive and Amazon does such a great job, it's forced other businesses to have competitive prices, which I love. If I take that same mindset to being the business owner, and I don't, I'm upset at the factory or I'm upset at Amazon. This creates a serious problem. Yeah, you can't have a because consumerism. Because my expectations, a consumerism yeah, mindset. You can't do a that with when you're doing business. It yeah. doesn't, doesn't happen, right? Because literally now I'm supposed to be the one serving the customer. Yeah. Yeah. Not you do this for me. No, no, no. I'm the business owner. It's my job. Even if they're unfair, I still have to say, okay, what's best for the business? Yeah. 100% total degree. You'll, you're going to encounter problems. This is a roller coaster of a ride. You mean yeah. it's not unicorns and rainbows? <laughs> no. <laughs> not, yeah, not That's not a great always. point. Like people <laughs> usually, they fail at actually enjoying, enjoying the actual journey of them, you know, becoming successful and, you know, mm -hmm. making sales on Amazon. People just want to make sales and make money fast, but they don't enjoy actually the build. It's true. Uh, if you would have succeeded you know, right away. Build in faith. If you would have succeeded right, right away, right? Yeah. Right yes. away. Say yeah. magic, right? Problem is you don't even know how to duplicate it because you just got lucky. Really? That happens to a lot of people. It's yeah. scary. Right? Yeah. It's scary. People get it's, lucky. Someone gets yeah. lucky yeah. and then they try to launch the next product or competitors yeah. come in like, wait, what's happening? And, and like, their, what their expectations were what here happened? and now no. they're here. You need to be kicked in the teeth. Yeah. yeah. If you're not, then you're just, you didn't, yeah. you just, that's the truth of it. Yeah. Right? That's literally that's how, you you get, how do you learn how to fight? You I remember fights. my failures, not my success. I ignore oh, the success. Yeah. I remember what I did that was wrong. So I don't do that again. Because it keeps you humble. It keeps you appreciative. It keeps you thankful. It keeps you enjoying life. You know, it was the lowest point in my marriage. It feels good to fail. It gives me joy. This morning I got to say, you look beautiful and I love you. Where does that come from? Because we almost lost our marriage. Like that's, right. that's important. Getting to that point actually has been a blessing from God, not a curse. Yeah. And the same is true of business. Like yeah. it's the low points that we need to learn to embrace those. Yeah. I, I like to say it feels good to fail. Yeah. Because if you think about it, if you don't fail, there's no way in life you're going to improve yourself. Yeah. You should be grateful to actually get to that failure, you know, having failed something with a business or love or whatever. Because now you're going to be learning from that and you know, become a better person, but a businessman. And so yeah. I like that quote. I it totally validates agree. the success. Yeah. Let me ask two more questions. We'll wrap this up. What about Amazon seller accounts getting suspended? Now let's agree on this. And I know we already do. If you open an Amazon account, your chance of getting it suspended is pretty high unless you know exactly what you're doing. This is the number one most common complaint today. <laughs> At least this is um, anecdotal evidence based on my experience is the most common complaint is I opened my Amazon account it got suspended. And what do they do? They say, well, I give up. I'm not meant to be an entrepreneur. <laughs> so first of all, that's got to change, right? <laughs> One failure should not. But wow. <laughs> why do Amazon accounts get suspended and how do you avoid that happening? Because it, it, it used to be the hijacker was the more popular issue, still is. Yeah. Now, in Amazon's efforts to filter out those hijackers. Exactly. That's what it is. That's boom. what it is. Yeah. They're doing so, a really good job, but yeah. kind of sometimes too good of a job. Yeah, yeah, sometimes it's too good of a job. You're right. Maybe it's a little bit too much, but it's it's the attempt of Amazon of protecting you as, an, as a seller. Yeah. And 
And so they try to make sure to verify your information, your documents, and if some of those information don't match, then your account got suspended or you know some of these things. And so that's the main reason. Amazon is trying to actually protect you and making sure that you are a real person, a real business, yeah. not some hacker from uh, whatever country in the world, right? And trying to open Amazon stores and hijack other listings, for example, which you know there, there used to be a lot of those. Like a hijacker, don't tell them. That's <laughs> no, well, like because you, you were talking did it by default. You were talking about secret guy from China. <laughs> <laughs> and you got a keyboard on your yeah, yeah, that's that's what <laughs> you're coding. I'm actually from <laughs> Russia. <laughs> I'm not Italian. So, Russia. <laughs> yeah, but that's exactly what it is. Like it's Amazon attempting uh, and doing it actually extremely well, protecting yourself. And then you know we have ways to get back. And at the end of the day, if you just follow Amazon, if you just give Amazon what they want, yeah, you're gonna get your account back. Yeah. Yeah. And that's an important statement. Yeah. What give Amazon, Amazon what wants. they want. Right. <laughs> and sometimes that becomes that is times. difficult yeah. to understand. But yeah. you hit on a lot of good points there. If you did nothing truly wrong, right, you'll be able to recover from whatever suspension it is. I totally yeah. agree. Yeah. And I want, but yeah. people give up. Yes. It's been yeah. two weeks and they're not helping. They don't They've rejected listen. me three or four times for the same thing. It's like, I, how long do you think it's gonna take to build your business if yeah. you give up after a few weeks? Danilo can relate to this. So back when I started early oh, on, I remember, the story. I, had, I remember that. I had some over-the-counter medical products that required FDA 510K. It's just yeah. a over-the-counter certification you have to have to it sell it. It took three months to get a certificate, right? Three months to get the certificate and six months for Amazon to approve it after I gave it to them 99 yeah. times. Yeah. Times. Nine months. Yeah. Aren't you glad you didn't give up after nine months? Oh yeah. Or right before this nine months. This guy's a machine, man. Uh, he's he's still machine. going. He, well, yeah. How many people would give up after nine months? And look at what they would miss out on. Yeah. Exactly. What you're enjoying today. That's what makes it better that you have yes. to wait that long, so not everybody can do it. It was so it. frustrating. It, you're right. right? Differentiates him from his yeah. competition because a lot of yeah. people would give up. Everyone's gonna give up. But I missed one key piece. They didn't want the FDA number, right? Which is you're approved, almost like right. a trademark, right? Here's your registration. They wanted the the filing information. But they didn't tell you that. Well, they, they, <laughs> they, 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 word, actually they worded it in a way within That's their message right. that it didn't call it the same thing. Yeah. So I kept providing everything. And then finally, I, I mean, call after call after call after call. Yeah. I mean, every single day I was on the phone, yeah. day and night with these I guys. And I finally got to somebody who said, all you need is this number. Yeah. And so I was yeah. able to go to the FDA website, grab that number, and I'm telling you within probably three <coughs> days after that, yeah. approved selling. Hmm. But that's consistency, persistency yeah. right there. People should, yeah. people, other people would have like given up uh, after a month, maybe. You know, that's it, this doesn't work. Amazon, it's, it's crap. Yeah. And yeah. that's a good lesson yeah. too. Like yeah. Amazon's not there to coddle you, just like in business, no one's there to coddle you, right? They're, they no speak in to code you? to coddle you. Like, okay, coddle, this is it. what yeah, you yeah, have yeah. to do. And no, they speak in code on purpose yeah. when you have a suspension or something like that. Because they don't want people to game the system, figure yeah. out what they're doing, sure. and then boom. And that's it. Yeah. And all you have to that do to, to fight a suspension is to really pay attention to what they're asking, yeah. answer that, nothing more, nothing less. That's it. And you, you provide extra information, you're in trouble. And no, it might, sure. and it might, because it gives them another reason to reject you. And oh, it yeah. might take weeks. It yeah. might take months. And it does sometimes. And if you feel overwhelmed, there are companies out oh, there yeah. that can help you. River Great Bend. companies. Look up River Bend. Yeah, the best. Would you guys agree? Like, yeah, a thousand percent. You introduced percent. me to them. A thousand Amazing. Percent. I'm they're, River uh, Bend Consulting is awesome. They're fighting a suspension for us right now. Yeah. yeah. Phenomenal. Yeah. Also phenomenal. Yeah. Yeah. Also for one of my investors. You know. yep. I, I um, hope that you guys listening to this, this gives you a really healthy dose of what it is like, not just to build an Amazon business, but any business. And some people are gonna go, well, you know, in this case, it sounds like there's a lot of problems and struggles. I'm just gonna go launch my own Shopify store. That will have its own challenges. You have to spend a lot more time on marketing and money and ranking on Google for people to even recognize your site, let alone trust it. So you're looking at an even longer ramp. So we still recommend Amazon, but we just want you to understand how difficult it can be so that when you do hit these obstacles, you can say, that ain't so bad. Hit me again. That ain't so bad. Let's go. What and business? You keep going. What business? Because that's how you get successful. What business isn't difficult? Yeah. It's just business, man. You know, yep. whatever the business is, it's 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 a journey. You gotta you gotta be ready to go through challenges yep. and overcome them. And the most important thing is, and I like to you know amusement is. Always go back to motivation. Yeah. Why do you want to get things done? What's your driving point? What's, and you what's said driving at the beginning? You? It was my motivation was my family, my family. first son. I, I couldn't see my son at the beginning. Would so you allow to Amazon away. to derail your goal for your family? Like seriously, would I allow struggles with Amazon to make? Oh, I give up. I was doing this for my family, but you know this problem. Yeah, yeah. It's too big, so I'm gonna give up on this dream for my family. Like. I would I even say, this how is, much do I really love my family? I, this is actually the, the, the subject for about 25 minutes of my first meeting with the investors. Hmm. We only talk about motivation. Why hmm. are you here? 
And so there's people like there's a lady, she's building a beautiful facility for a specific type of uh, autistic children, right? There's another uh, lady, she is going to be able to pay her daughter's uh, college tuition because mm. the business, like these are much greater purposes. And yeah. that's what should be driving your business, not the, uh, the, the, the hunger of making more money. I want to make more. What is the money for? Yeah. What do you need the money for? What's your, what's your motivation? And so I like to extract that from people's brains yeah. because sometimes so people don't, don't, un, don't even know what their motivation is. Mm. And I need to know yeah. because if I want to be a better brand builder and if I want to help you yeah. and if I want to serve you better in the future and we all, you know, on the same page on this, we need to understand what drives you. Uh, like family, you know, yep. like, like, w w w why do you want to get these things done? And so, so that I like when the to storms come, that. I can yeah. remember yeah. the why. That's so important. And let me give yeah. you guys a website and I'll include it below as well. Well, two, go to Profit Business Guru, subscribe to this guy. He's got awesome content. Second, jod.com slash DFY. So JOD stands for just one dime, DFY done for you. If you want to apply for just one dime to build you an Amazon business. But again, I said it before, I'm gonna say it again. Do not apply if you're scraping up the very last bit of your income, your life savings, something, you know, you just, this is all you got, it's not worth it. If you don't have a job, if you don't have money coming in, if you don't have some kind of plan, because look, this is an investment. There are no guarantees in life, and especially when it comes to something like this. Your product could fail, the supplier could go south, lots of bad things can happen. We are comfortable in that. We are used to that. It's normal, but I think it's important for people who haven't, and I don't mean this condescendingly, if you haven't gone through that, <coughs> you need to know that now. And if you're building your own business, same thing. You are going to run into problems. Can we do this, guys? Each person, each of you guys, what's one concise piece of encouragement you can offer to people watching? Because I think some people are probably gonna be a little discouraged, which is good. Like my hope is it filters out people who shouldn't be doing this anyways. And then for those of you who are discouraged, you're like, thank you, I got knocked down today, but this is good because now I know what to expect. How would you encourage them? Back to what I was saying before, find your why, understand what your motivation is. I think for me, that's fundamental. Any business you build, you can understand why you wanna get things done and make sure you figure that out. Because yeah. I'm telling you, many people don't even know that. And so if once you figure that out, then that's your motivation right there. That's, that's your encouragement right there. Beautifully said. Yeah. If this sounds like it's too many problems, you don't want to deal with it, no problem. Go work for someone else, hmm. right? And go there's work nothing, nothing wrong with that. Go work for the man. Yep. And you'll make the man or woman their millions. <laughs> you're, you're, you're right. <laughs> Not <laughs> everyone like wrong with that, but it's well said. It's going to have our vision, right? Yep. I, yeah. I can't blame somebody else because they want to work for somebody in, in whether blue color, white color jobs. It doesn't matter. True. Right? True. You, you just weren't given the same vision I was. Yeah. Right? But I would rather chase my goals than fulfill someone else's dreams any yeah. day. Uh, and, and so for me, it's if there's anything, don't give up. So it, it is that why you have to want to succeed like you need to breathe. Yeah. And when that happens, You're there'll ready. be no greater driving force. You'll be unstoppable. It doesn't matter Amen. what adversities or obstacles. You're come still going to find a way. It's going to because you want to live. And, exactly. Yeah. And then it feels exactly. so much better to succeed. Yeah. God, because you yeah. built it and you went yes. through the challenges. You feel that and now satisfaction. You, made it. Right. you look yeah. back and you're like, wow, I, yes. I can tell you when I started this thing, I was like, what am I doing? I'm losing money. This is insane. <laughs> My wife's like, you spend another dollar. We're, I'm out of here. <laughs> I mean, I honestly, stuff. she's like, you know, and honestly, there, there were times, not anymore, but we sure. were living paycheck to paycheck. Yeah. I remember that, what that feels like. Yep. Yep. A hundred percent. Yeah. When I decided to leave my, my, uh, I was working in the restaurant industry, right? So leave my job at the restaurant to uh, keep working on, you know, on Amazon, build my brands. Yeah. My wife was like, you know, I, for the first 12 months, I didn't take nothing out of my company. I yeah. didn't take no profits, right? So she was like, hey, you never took any money. Are you gonna be able to actually sustain the family, feed the family? Because she was, actually she was pregnant with our, first, with our second son, I believe, our first son. Hmm. And so are you going to be able to actually uh, feed my family, feed our family? You know, you never, where's the money from Amazon? And so right. sure. that's my motivation, you know? Yeah. And how does and, she feel about it today? Uh, it feels amazing because there was the best, the best decision I could ever made at that time, you know, leaving my, my, uh, by nine, my 10 to 12 o'clock at night <laughs> job. <laughs> People say nine to five, you, know, you're blessed. Yeah. It was yeah. 10 yeah. from nine 12 o'clock at night. It was 12, 13, 14 hours a day. Yeah. And so that was the best decision. When I left the job at the restaurant, I was still making uh, on Amazon less than how much money I was making on the, on, uh, on at the restaurant, yeah. but it was the right thing for me to do at that time. So that you could focus on your business yeah, I could, and I could eventually business. it could feed you yeah. so much more. You yeah. were willing to go through that tension yeah. with your wife, yeah. the suffering, 
building a business while working insane yeah. hours so you could enjoy what you do today. Only thing I needed was more time yeah. to actually build the business and yeah. be, uh, expand the business. Yeah. yeah, it's awesome. Guys, thank you so much, Danilo, Patrick, Brett. This has been awesome. Hope you guys have enjoyed this. This is like one of the most cool, raw conversations I think we've had with Amazon sellers. What it is like, our goal is that you have a reality and expectation of if you're gonna build your business, it's gonna be hard. It's not gonna be easy, but you can do it. The question is, what kind of person are you?